All right, so this week um, I spent a bunch of time looking at tools and spending a lot of time really moreover just thinking and learning more and more about how to build better and better unit tests um, and came across a tool called Faker. And, you know, inside of unit testing, right, you know, you are thinking about tossing a lot of variability potentially at some function. Um, and thinking about a lot of different, you know, variations um, of, you know, what could be sent at, you know, some new feature that you built. And Faker is a library that helps you generate a bunch of fake data really quickly. Um, and it can generate all different types of data from random strings to more lifelike data, right? Like email addresses, people's names, you know, you know female or male names. Um, it can do like countries, street addresses, like, you know, the list goes on and on and on. And here's a look at like, all the different things that it can go off and build. Um, you know, it could even do lorem ipsum if you wanted it to, right? So there, there's just sort of so much that this thing can generate. And so, you know, you can pair this with whatever tool you're using for unit testing in order to send a bunch of, you know, what are lifelike pieces of data um, at whatever you've just built that you are building your unit tests for. Um, and so here's a look at something that I just built to demo what you know Faker can do. Um, what I, I'm you know using Faker in JavaScript, it's been ported to other languages as well. Um, but in my case, I've got it installed as a dev dependency because um, I'm using it for unit testing. I am using ES modules here, so I've imported it. Um, I'm importing a particular locale. There's a bunch of different locales that Faker supports, um, and I'm importing the one for English US um, so that it you know shrinks a little bit of the file size down for what I'm importing. Um, I have a seed value defined here. I'm gonna come to that here in a moment, um, and then and just as a small example, you saw how big this list is over here. I've got a couple entities that, you know, this particular function can spit out data for, and that's here. Um, it's this function that generates data. You know, I pick some entity that I want to generate data for in some quantity, and then I have a flag that, you know, more or less tells this function to, to, to see whether or not it's going to spit out the same thing twice. Um, and that's what the seed is. And so, you know, it, it, it's random, the, the values that Faker generates are random, right? So if you, you know, you run the same thing twice, you're gonna get different values. Um, but you can tell Faker generate the same thing so that if you're in, for example, the instance of uh, unit testing, right? You can send the same set of data twice so that you can confirm that if something failed the first time around that it's gonna pass the second time around. So I've got, you know, this, function here just generates a bunch of data and then I've got a couple things that it can generate data for. So first off, let's go and generate five emails. Let's actually generate these in such a way where if I run this twice, I'm going to see the same result. And so if I go and I just node faker, I'm going to get these values here, these five values. And maybe let's take, let's remember in this case, Corey Connell, um, is the third result, right? And so if I go and run this again, you're gonna see that Corey Connell at hotmail.com is a third, and you know all the others are gonna be the same too, right? But if I were to change this and have it say false, right? Again, this effectively is gonna mean that it's not gonna use a seed. The check that I have here is just gonna sort of move right past it. Um, and if I do that, then, actually let's clear this out. Um, so we've got, five different email addresses versus Eloy, it looks like. And then we got Corinne, then we got Darren, you know, and so it's now generating purely random things, right? Um, so interesting, cool. Let's, you know, just to sort of go here through these stuff really quickly, right? Like we can generate a bunch of different people's names, 20 of them, great, cool. What about just random words? Can I just generate words? Um, with Faker, you can. Here we go, you're just random words. These are sort of more like or some cell words, you know, they're sort of not real words, but um, so you can generate words. 
maybe I, instead of just the actual life like or real things, maybe what I'm trying to do is just generate random strings. In this case, uh, alphanumeric strings. And so we can do that. Let's actually clear this again. These are all gonna be of the same length. In this case, I've just have them set to be, you know, 10 characters in length. So you can see what paper can do here. And then, you know, lastly, right, we can just spit out a bunch of numbers in varying lengths. So Baker, super interesting. Um, I'm going to be using it a whole bunch as I am doing my testing. Um, it's, I think, really powerful for me not to think of everything, but think about what, what I'm actually is going to appear inside of my feature that I've been building and then send it at my um, use Baker to sort of mimic or simulate or synthesize right that data for me um, and send it at my testing suite.